Um, okay, so we are literally just a couple of weeks away from branching out to be able to expand our campus to the Taos, New Mexico area. And along with that, we're going to be growing not only our school, but our programs, the depth of them, and the things that we are going to be doing individually together and as a school. So Sam, would you like to start us off with the slideshow? Yes, I'd love to. Hi, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for making it. And I'm excited that we can do this. We can get together and talk a little bit about, about this finally after a long period of of kind of being silent about it. Sitchin and I have spent probably almost two years uh, in the planning and thinking and figuring out how this was going to work and spending a lot of time, not just in Taos, but in other areas uh, in the Southwest and Southern California, or I'm sorry, Southern uh, Colorado, um, primarily a little bit in Northern Arizona, different parts of New Mexico. And uh, really time and time again just came back to the Taos area so let me yeah I, I threw together a real quick slideshow here just because I wanted to share a few things it's always easier if we have a little bit of um you know of prompting here so that I don't forget or that I hopefully more for me it's more like so that I don't get too far off off track so it'll keep me online hopefully so let me go ahead and start up a slideshow here let's just start from the beginning on this and hopefully everybody can see that okay We go and I'll pull up the chat here just to make sure in case anybody has any questions. So you know this is a we're kind of doing this as a Q and A the way that we've done our um, our uh, our office hours in the past. So of course you know uh, jump into chat. I'm going to turn on my chat here just so I can see in case anybody has anything to to say as I'm going here. So chat questions. Um, of course we have you know Suchel here. We have Rick here. It looks like. We have Amy, thank you, Amy, for being here as well. We have a lot of, uh, we have, um, you know, a lot of folks that can answer questions so as we go through this. So feel free to jump in and chat, or uh, if there's a break, if you can get me to shut up long enough, then you can jump in, of course, in your microphone too. Otherwise, you know, uh, keep it muted just so there's no background noise if you're not speaking, but uh, it's no problem to jump in that way too. So um, without further ado then, uh, we are moving, right? So the human path, as most of you who've been around for the longest period of time know us and the Herbal Medics Academy, it's one and the same thing. And actually we even have a, you know, we've, we've created a new LLC in New Mexico just called Herbal Medics. You know, so Human Path, doing business as Herbal Medics, H, uh, Herbal Medics Academy, DBA, uh, Herbal Medics. Um, partially we jumped in on that, honestly, you know, since I were talked about this for a while because uh, cannabis, as those of you who don't know, uh, is recreationally legal now in New Mexico as of this year. And so one of the things I wanted to make sure, both of us wanted to make sure that kind of came up in our thoughts was, you know, we don't want anybody else jumping into the term herbal medics or using those two words together as an LLC uh, that's, you know, a dispensary or, or, or whatever, you know, for cannabis. Uh, not that there's there's already that enough of, enough of a stigma on that anyway, right? I mean, we've been dealing with that for 15 years when we or 13 at least since we started up Herbal Medics. Right. And, uh, you know, here, especially places where it's not legal now, now that it's legal, you know, uh, recreationally, it's even more, more of a, of a challenge that way with the name. So uh, it's called Herbal Medics in New Mexico, and I'll have a clinic there. We'll talk about that in a second, which will be a different name, but uh, Human Path and Herbal Medics Academy, as most of you know, is one of the same, right? Um, Herbal Medics Academy was really started because people just got confused because we had so much curriculum that we had to divide off. The herbal, which is really, of course, the primary part of our school, is is anything related to uh, herbal or integrative medicine. Okay, so we have a new Taos campus, and pro and programs that are mostly going to see the expansion off of this are the austere medicine program, the clinical herbalism program, and the apothecaries program, or advanced medicine making, as we call it. So, everybody wants to know: Are you going away from San Antonio? No, in a word, no. We still have the San Antonio campus available to us indefinitely for years and years and years. Uh, we will continue, especially in the winter. You know, as, as all of you know, who live down here, uh, this is not a good place to do classes in the middle of the summer. We actually used to do that. I used to do the scout class down here. We were just talking about that one year. It was it was like this, about 104 degrees doing the scout class. And man, it was miserable. We had one person that got heat exhaustion. It's just so it's, you know, it's the kind of thing that 
uh, winter time makes a great campus here. And that means late fall through, you know, through spring really. Uh, so botany and plant walks, of course, blacksmithing will always continue here. Medicine making intensives and workshops. Renee is, is teaching a lot of little short intensives now coming up. So that's great because we have uh, Renee uh, and her experience in the apothecary now is uh, superlative and her medicine making skills are superlative. So she can actually teach in my, you know, in, in, on behalf of me, and knowing that this is how I like to make the medicine. So uh, she'll be doing that here. Um, Rick will be teaching scout workshops down here. Um, he's up in Dallas and it will be easy for him to come down here and teach outdoor survival skills and, and reconnaissance and land navigation. And we still have access to the you know, gigantic ranch if we need it for land navigation as we always have. Uh, you know, whatever, a thousand or, or two acres to be able to, to work within hill country there, which is gorgeous. And then David, of course, David Prickett, who is the new owner of the of the campus down here and has been for a few years, is uh, is well on his way to making a, an eco village happen here. And there's some, some really exciting things going on there. So there's a lot that is related coming back around full circle to homesteading. For those of you who may remember, we started out or not too long after we started out, we did a bunch of homesteading type stuff, you know, classes and so forth. And that's that's coming full circle now around to a concept of an eco village and other people living here, which of course we have uh, some, but really expanding that out a little bit, in fact. So uh, I don't want to get too far into that, but, but there's some really cool stuff coming down the pike there too. Let's talk about Taos. Um, and, um, and then I'll maybe back off and shut up for a second. I'm sure uh, Sucha wants to talk too. And uh, we can go from there. So this is kind of highly uh, uh, unscripted, as you can tell. Taos itself, northern uh, New Mexico, about what about an hour and fifteen minutes south drive of uh, of Colorado border border, and is a beautiful place. If you haven't been there, you know, regardless of where you come up for anything in our school or not, I highly suggest um, coming on up. Okay. Oh, uh, Betsy says, well, those not speaking, turn off their mics. If you haven't already done that, please do turn off your microphones if you're not talking so we don't have background noise. Uh, great. So here's a few pictures of the area here. This is uh, Taos at night, looking at it from above the hills. We are, the place that we have now that we're getting, we don't have it yet, but it's we're, we're really close. Uh, we're waiting on the closing date right now. Is, uh, is if you were to, where you where this picture is taken from, pretty much, if you were to just turn around and walk about uh, four or five miles uh, to the east from here, then you'd be at where we're at. So to give you an idea, we're kind of, we're back in, set in into the mountains a little ways. Um, this is from the area real close by as well. Uh, here's the gorge, the, the, um, the Rio Grande is, is right here and the gorge. And then up here is, um, this is uh, Angel Fire Ski Area, I believe. Or no, that's Taos Mountain, my bad. That's Taos Mountain actually, which is also very close. So we have a couple of ski areas, three ski areas really very close. One that's 20 minutes away from where we're at and Taos itself, like downtown, I guess you could call it downtown, the plaza. It's not like it's a very, you know, it's a small uh, um, kind of rural town, but very, uh, if you aren't familiar with it, very um, arts oriented. So lots and lots of uh, pretty much everything is Adobe there. You know, I mean, even there's, you know, even a McDonald's is, is a, an Adobe building. Everything is Adobe and, uh, and very, very artistic. A lot of, you know, tons of galleries is what it's well known for. And it is, uh, uh, it has a center like a plaza. And so the plaza from the plaza to our property is less than 10 minutes drive. Uh, so probably a little, probably around four to five miles up the Cap Taos Canyon, up, up Highway 64. Um, I keep saying, all right, you know, we, we're very confident at this point we're getting this, but it's like we, we can't keep people waiting too much longer. I, I didn't have a bunch. I put a bunch of videos up in that YouTube. If you haven't seen it, check it out because there's better, better shots. This is a shot uh, from down the road a little bit looking up, I believe, at uh, part of the campus or part of the campus here a little bit. That's the uh, edge of it. Yeah, this is yeah, right. The edge of, of the campus. The campus itself now, the new area is going to is about 13 acres. Uh, that borders on national forest on one side and has uh, um, about 750 feet of river frontage on the other side. Uh, you know, it ranges in the dry season between being a creek, I means year round, uh, all the way to a, a, a pretty big river stocked with trout. Uh, it's, it's, you know, so you can fish in it year round as well, or, or you know, uh, at least through the, you know, up until it's maybe too much ice. Um, if anybody has their mic on, please shut, shut off your mic if you're not uh, speaking right now. There's a lot of background noise there. I heard it too. 
so that's the campus and the, the campus itself has, um, uh, you know, is, is basically uh, the, the same area where we will have the clinic. Okay, so classes, if you haven't noticed, have changed a little bit to a more online centric kind of uh, uh, presentation. So most of our didactic stuff is now online and then we are stepping back into on site, but doing it in, a, in an intensive manner. So in other words, you take prerequisites sometimes, most of the time, that are online first, then you hit the ground running when you come on site, and we do intensives to really give you the hands-on and put everything together. And that is uh, what we'll be doing there. And so we'll see you know, short classes there, three-day to all the way up to maybe a 13 or 14-day, not maybe, definitely a 13-day for the home course, but otherwise, you know, in a, in a neighborhood of one to three-day, uh, several times a year. Uh, you know, by the time we get up and running pretty, pretty heavily on the school itself. Um, anything that you want to say to that uh, on that? Suchan? Sorry, my internet connection is going to be really bad here. So um, if I start to cut out, maybe you or Amy can let me know. Um, I actually would like to chime in on the, the, um, the slides that are coming up in a couple of minutes, but just wanted to let everyone know, I see a lot of students that we have in our different programs that, and we've been fielding questions for months and months about what we're doing. And the intention here is that we are expanding the campus or expanding the school in a way that's gonna allow us to really fulfill the mission that uh, we have started years and years ago. Really the, um, the culmination of when we founded the nonprofit Herbal Medics and we changed it into the school, but we are really going to be emphasizing a lot of things that are near and dear to both of our hearts, um, mainly for me, austere medicine, uh, wilderness medicine, and um, being able to really put depth to a clinical program in a way that simply isn't out there. And I've seen quite a few of you who have been with us on Navajo Nation trips and other clinical trips. And what we're gonna be doing is going to be uh, an immersion in that type of learning, the way that you have been accustomed to, but going to the next level and allowing students for a lot more longevity in the, in the studies so that you can get either a short period of time all the way up to significantly longer weeks or even a month or longer. So I know that Sam has got uh, a couple of slides coming up that are gonna speak to that and I can chime in at that point. Okay, great, thank you. Let me move on. Okay, so let's just go straight into, uh, make sure, yeah, this is the next one. So let's go straight into the programs that are going to be expanding off of this uh, austere medicine, which encompasses everything that has to do with medicine in an off-grid and a post-disaster or remote location. However, also it, you know, it does feed back into just basic uh, good clinical skills. Uh, even if you are in the middle of the city and your office is, you're, you have a, you have maybe an herbal uh, clinic or some kind of clinic in the middle of a strip mall, you know, you still need to know basic first aid in my opinion. So it's always, it, it always is applicable, but you know, the, the, of course the, the focus here is the off-grid wilderness post-disaster kind of situation. So the home herbal and off-grid medicine experience is probably the, the, the first real um, on-site, no, not real, but the first big on-site uh, intensive we're going to do. Uh, I, th I think prior to that, we're going to try to throw in, we'll definitely do at least one three-day WFA up there, uh, possibly even late this fall. And then we're going to try to maybe do one three-day WFR. The WFR, Wilderness First Responder, just as a side note, uh, well, I guess it's on my list there, so let me get into that real quick, has changed format a little bit to a hybrid, so where you take a WFA and an advanced WFA online, both of which are, are basically the equivalent of, of about a three day, a three day, you know, in other words, uh, 24 hours of uh, material. And then you come to site to on site and you do the final piece of that for your WFR certification, which is mostly scenario based um, intensive that includes a lot of testing the way that we like to do testing. For those of you who are familiar with it, usually that's in a group setting so that you have three or four people who are making medical decisions and dealing with, with whatever's going on. And that way we get to rotate all the skills around over and over again. So uh, that's what you'll be seeing up there for WFR, 
as well as uh, the WFR portion of the home. The home site then, back to that for just a second, is a um, sort of an aggregation of four courses. It's the MAP course, which is going on literally right now. Uh, if you haven't signed up for that and you want to, grab it. The online portion of it is, pre is required. It's a prerequisite for the home course. This is the medical advance party. That's what that means. Not like map, like a, like a, a, a terrain map or, or a topo map, but that is actually topographical map reading is a small part of the map course. The map course is what we need to be able to know to set up the infrastructure for an off-grid medical situation, a clinic, right? This could be post-grid or post-disaster. This can be off-grid. This can be expeditionary medicine, whatever. Uh, it is a way that you learn how to um, create that infrastructure and what you need to be able to uh, take a team into an, an environment like that. So you could be completely orthodox medicine and, and not have any experience in integrative or, or herbal or any other type of, of um, you know, alternative uh, or holistic care. And this is still a very valuable course if you want to just take this by itself. And you can, you can each of these pieces it can certainly be done a la carte as such. So it's, it's a combination then of four things. A map is first. The second is the WFR certification, which I just talked about. It's the three days of that. So three days of map uh, or medical advance party on site after you've done the online piece, which is going on right now. It's an eight week online. So three days of the map on site, three days of the WFR on site, uh, which again, of course, has its prerequisites to get there, uh, the WFA and the advanced WFA. And then three days of the austere trauma taught mainly by Steve Pearson, and I, I'm in there a little bit as well. I'll be doing all the herbal pieces of that around that, which will be more like introduction to certain things, plant walks, we'll be gathering, we'll, we'll be making some medicine, we'll be harvesting and wildcrafting and getting ready, especially for the fourth part, which is the austere acute, which is acute care, and which includes also chronic uh, diseases that maybe where we have acute issues uh, that are related to that, but in an off-grid or, uh, or a post-disaster setting. Whole thing is basically scenario-based with a scenario that sort of evolves and crescendos uh, and, you know, up and down uh, throughout the, the course. This, uh, the final kind of capstone day then, that's 12 days total, so three, six, nine, 12 of each part, portion of that. And then the 13th day uh, is just the morning. We set up an actual clinic, a real clinic, an herbal clinic, and, uh, and run it for an underserved community in the area. So, it gives us a chance to, to just kind of put all of that together uh, up till that point even with the austere acute you know we will be doing a little bit of clinical stuff too uh with with perhaps for some people coming in with acute issues uh so this is the chance to be able to put all of that together the austere trauma and the austere acute both have prerequisites of the online portion respectively of each of those as well each of those is a 12-week online course taught by dr Pearson and myself and uh, uh the the austere trauma just ran this spring, the Austere Acute runs this fall, and then the Austere Trauma again next spring. So if you need the Austere Acute as a prereq for the home, you know, this fall is the last chance to get it before the next home, the first home that we do, which will be 2023. Uh, the plan is to be able to do one a year, of course, at this point. Okay, so that's that. Radio, and, oh, is there a question? Your, yeah, can I jump in on this one, Sam? Yeah. So um, we got a couple of students who are asking, they're kind of new to the program, asking if they can jump in. And yes, you can, even if you don't have, even if you haven't taken any of the prerequisite courses. Now, Amy posted a link to where you can find information about that. The one that is the easiest to get into, and no, you don't have to have prior experience. These are designed to be for the working lay person so that you can jump in and learn. We have a teaching style, I feel like anyway is really accessible and that we're very excited about having people get trained up for their own communities. So um, the big course that you can jump in right now is the MAP course. It just started, it's perfect timing. That's one of the prerequisites knocked out of the way. And as Sam mentioned, there is the trauma course, there's the acute care course, those are the big ones, but they also have other courses that are wrapped in it so that you don't have to take um, other things in addition, like the acute care has the acute viral infection course that's inside of it. And the, uh, the austere trauma has the infection and wound management nestled inside of that. So you get four courses done while you're taking two. So if you're serious about doing a home course, my recommendation really would be to jump into the MAP course, which is really fun. I'm teaching, of course, it's gonna be fun. Um, but we've got a lot of things that we go through that will help you get ready. And it's it's not a 
medical advance party may sound like it's something that is like a little bit nebulous. I believe Sam will talk to that a little bit too. And as a part of this, we do have for anyone who is interested in this, so that you can kind of get a better feeling for what that course is, we have a free download. I believe Beth, um, if you're about, can you let them know? I think we have a free download so that you can watch the first class and see what it's all about and what, what a medical advance party is for. But the, these courses here are, in my opinion, these are all really critical infrastructure pieces for wilderness medicine, austere medicine, post-disaster medicine. Basically, in a nutshell, these are courses that can help you when there is no higher care. And we've just come out of two years of pandemic where some of us have seen some things that were pretty grisly or, or very hard to deal with. And others of us just, you know, had a, a more, uh, I guess, a, a not easier time of things, but it was, it was, we were not exposed to some of the things that other people were. This course is designed for anything that could happen, whether you're in an urban environment that's got a natural disaster, or you are in a place where you're too far away to get to urgent care. So these are things we hear over and over again, people who are able to use these skills and utilize them in a way that can be life-saving. So I really encourage you, even if becoming a, a healthcare professional is not your thing, I really encourage you to consider these courses because of the importance they are of having both community herbalists and people who understand what to do in the face of an emergency or just you know discomfort knowing what to do. Like right now, as just a small example, my daughter, she lives in Monterrey, Mexico, and she told me today that the city of Monterrey has literally run out of water. And so they are trying to scramble to figure out ways of what are they gonna do without water. Some areas have been over seven days with no water at all. So these things are, you know, maybe 20 years ago, things that we talked about as being kind of like almost a zombie apocalypse-esque. And now in a growing number of places these are the realities so i uh, just wanted to um just wanted to let you know that if you are just starting out please contact me and i can help you with that and trevor for you yes just contact me directly um and for course bundling as well anna and myself and crystal we all work with bundling to make it more accessible we try to keep these courses as reasonable as possible while still making sure we pay our instructors a, a good wage so that's what I have on this slide. Thank you, Sam. Great. Okay, that's pretty much it. The only thing I wanted to jump in there is probably on the, la the last part there, scenario-based survival and expeditionary medicine intensives. That's something that I've, I would love to be able to come back and revisit. Uh, we started off doing a lot more survival, tracking, those kinds of things when we first opened the school here. Uh, however, um, it quickly became more um, herbal medicine focused. Uh, and that was just a matter of bandwidth, really. I used to teach everything at the beginning, and now um, you know we've we've just had to focus and go deeper than we than we used to be by far too, in the process. Well, now we're back in an area where I can do that, and I'm and I've got to tell you, and part of this move, you know, is because of the fact that I think Suja got tired of me whining about the fact that I miss the mountains, and I got to be in the mountains, and I do, and this is the mountains. I love snow. I love that you know having all of those things there again uh, is great, and I would love to be able to do some winter. Uh, survival medicine type courses. So that's not coming up right away. You know, we've got to get our feet under us first with some of these other things. And, uh, and, and, and but that's, that's where I see uh, us being able to do some short intensives uh, along those lines later too. But probably everything we do is going to be more or less uh, focused towards medical infrastructure or medical support or medicine itself in a clinical sense. And with that, I'll, let me segue over to the next slide, which is clinical herbalism. How is that going to be affected and, and expanded? And that is going to be expanded in the sense that, that I am opening a clinic there that's full time. So that's going to take me about a year, probably. Right now, I'm finishing up. I literally today was my last uh, internship day uh, at, down at the acupuncture clinic. Um, so I yeah, that at that totals up about 900 hours of clinical hours. Um, you know out of which like maybe almost 200 or 180 or like observations at the very beginning. So about 700, I've done more than I needed to. So I'm around 740 hours or so of clinical uh, uh, intensive, of clinical internship, um, uh, basically treating patients uh, is for, the, for the last, whatever it's been, year, year and a half, something like that. So I'm, that's given, gets me into the uh, 
the ability now to be able to take my board exams. I'll have a master's in science in uh, acupuncture and oral medicine so that I can take my board exams. Uh, there's four that I have to pass and get my license. There's another clinical exam I have to take in New Mexico. I have to do some stuff to so work a little bit with the Taos uh, County to get the, you know, for, for the clinic to be able to open and all that. So we're looking at about a year probably before I have the doors open uh, from now, uh, maybe less, uh, but, but that's probably the, I'm um, hopefully that's the longest it would be at that point. Uh, we can open up a clinical internship. Uh, this means that we can have students who have gone through the correct prerequisites to be able to come up and to work in the clinic. Uh, they can come up for whatever we determine. We'll kind of go by demand. You know, it could be uh, that students want to come in for, you know, a long, uh, maybe a, a one week or, you know, just during the week or three or four days at a time uh, interspersed throughout on a calendar, or maybe more like they want to come in for a month or two months, or there'll be a couple of slots and then we'll have calendars and it'll be sort of like, if you want to go to an Airbnb, you know, kind of like finding the, finding the dates and figuring that out. This allows you to come in and work in an, in, in an integrative clinical environment. So uh, while I'm the one opening the clinic to start with, the goal is to certainly to have um, somebody else there who's a functional medicine doctor, knock on wood, it might be Kyla Helm, to have a Western style herbalist there who's able to take over some of that stuff for me so I can focus on the integration between TCM herbalism and Western herbalism. Uh, it'll be primarily, you know, my side of things will be primarily herbalism one way or the other. Of course, acupuncture plays a small role in there too, but I really, you know, herbalism plays a big role. Sports medicine would be probably where acupuncture fits in really well. And, uh, and then of course, um, with the functional medicine, we, you know, we have the nutrition, et cetera. And then pain management, I'd like to get some certifications in, in, in using acupuncture for, for kind of neural, um, neurological uh, acupuncture. There's some certification right there in New Mexico that's very high standard uh, for being able to work with acupuncture for pain management as well. So I'm looking forward to all of that and being able to really integrate all of that in. And most importantly, to be able to share that with students. I want students to come in and be able to, by the time they're done there, to have all the clinical hours that they need and, and we'll figure out what that hour you know amount would be to be able to get through our portion of our clinical certifications um, and of course it depends on what they need maybe you need you know a certain number to get your AHG registration and that's important to you and, that, and we work with with each student kind of differently on a, on a case by case basis uh, at least to begin with and that gives you you a chance to also understand how to run a clinic um, I don't know for sure whether what the insurance situation will be um, we'll at least go down that road to see how it works. And, um, you know, there's good stories, there's bad stories with insurance. So, but that, if so, that gives you that, that piece of it, running a business, so obviously all the intake stuff and soap notes, et cetera. And then uh, uh, knowing how to, how to run the business from beyond that. But most importantly, you know, understanding the clinical integration stuff. How, how do you work with a functional medicine doc? And, and how do you work with an acupuncturist? How do you work with a chiropractor? How do you work with, you know, a, a Western you know, endocrinologists that maybe doesn't really want to work with you uh, to begin with, but then their patient's getting better and insists on it. And that, you know, I mean, that happens to me all the time anyway. I'm sure there it's going to happen too. And I think Taos is, and New Mexico certainly is a lot more open to that in general. I think probably even at the, at the, the MD level we find, yeah, I, I'm, I'm expecting to find uh, it is a much easier place to work with holistic medicine in Texas is much, much easier. I couldn't do this here. It's just, you know, despite all of the, the screaming and hollering about, you know, Texas is a freedom, a state of freedom, it's not at all. It's a very non-free state it's when it comes to this, this kind of subject. So uh, New Mexico is. So this is wonderful and really gives us a chance to do some cool, uh, cool stuff with, for our students. Um, this is great. And I'm, I know a bunch of you have uh, posted some some uh, uh, chats and I'm sorry if I'm missing them. I'm trying to kind of focus on what I'm saying or I'll, I'll never get to it, but um, that's the clinical herbalism piece. Are there, if there's any questions specific to that and you want to turn your mic on or you have anything you want to po post in here, uh, maybe this would be a good time to, to sit back or, or Suchel, if you have anything to say. Yeah, so um, Sam, a, a few people are, I don't know if you'd like me to cover this later or right now, but a few people have been asking about if they're coming out to do an internship, either a short or a longer class, and someone earlier did ask about longer classes like the longer WFR, are we going to pick those up again? But um, will there be a place for them to stay? You want to cover that now or later? Let's cover it now. Uh, that's fine. Okay. It's a good place to talk about it. Do you want sure, to talk I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. 
the way you can have a break there. So the property that we are getting is really unique. As, as the woman who is selling it to us, it fell through for someone else. And she said to me, she said, well, you know, it fell through because it was meant, you were meant to, you and your husband were meant to have this place. It, it was meant to be yours. And I have to say, being there, I, I feel more at home and more in my place than I ever have anywhere. And I'm super excited to share this with all of our students who are such like-minded individuals. It's really a special place and it has literally everything that we have like cooked up in our heads as to be the perfect kind of campus and the things that it doesn't, it has the ability for us to extend those. So for those of you who've been asking like, where can you stay? We have kind of a gradation of options, everything from you know, an Airbnb that will be on the property that um, can be rented out to students who are not really um, up for doing camping to doing glamping. We are going to look at our options for that between um, glorious RV uh, lodging uh, all the way to other options that we are kind of researching to see what would be good things. We've been talking about doing a student dorm. Um, there is absolutely camping that would be just awesome there. Right along, there's some river riverfront areas and the meadows there are just like, you can't beat it. It's just really gorgeous. And not even less than 30 seconds away, a 30 second drive around the corner is an RV and a camping facility by an older gentleman who runs that and has, um, <clears throat> we're actually going to be meeting with him um, this weekend to talk about options for students there. And in town, if that's not what you wanna do, if you wanna do something a little more uh, urban, then there's tons of hotels and bread, bed and breakfasts and Airbnbs and lodges and the nightlife and the environment in Taos, a little village or town of Taos is really lovely. And so whatever it is that your needs are, if you're not cut out for camping, don't worry. There's tons of options, both close to us and in the Taos area as well, that make whatever it is that you need for being comfortable possible. Okay, there you go. All right, good. Uh, yeah, seemed like I was something else I was gonna say on that. Oh, one of the things uh, with the camping, yes, Rebecca, thank you. Actually, that's perfect. You read my mind. Um, one of the one of the things that we will be putting in there will be a sort of Quonset hut type uh, facility to be able to have as as our indoor classroom if we need it. You know, if the weather inclement weather or we just need an indoor space. Uh, and with with lavatories and showers um, as well. Yes, that's absolutely necessary. It won't be. It'll be rustic for sure, uh, but um, it'll be it'll be there, be clean, and be able to be be used for you. Um, and then, as Suchel said, there's there's camping, not just the one. There's a place less than a half a mile from us. It's, it's a campground and an RV uh, uh, campground as well. Um, both and that's only one of maybe three or four up and down that canyon within you know a five minute drive so if you don't want to spend all the money of course you know trying to find something in town then you have a lot of options from our place to beyond so yes yes okay good Okay, uh, the Apothecaries program. I think this is the last of the of the three. This is kind of the last slide of the things that are expanding here. Uh, what? How does how does that fit in? Well, as you know, probably if you've taken the Apothecary programs, it's a, you know it's normally it's a two semesters basically of you know, an internal medicine and external medicine, and is it six or seven intensives? I can't keep up. I don't. There's always a new one, but six. There's only five intensives. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, never mind then. All right, I know there's internal, external, mushroom medicine, uh, multi-frac, and food as medicine. Is that it? Did I get it right? Never mind then. How I dare you? How dare you to uh, leave out GMP, which is everyone's favorite topic. Oh, GMP. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that would be- the Food as medicine, we don't do that anymore. Okay, so GMP instead of food as medicine now. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. You're supposed to say, wow, just wow. <laughs> All right. So um, where does this fit in then? And this is 
something that Susan and I have talked about for quite a while. How can we really give uh, people who, are, who want more experience making medicine really hands-on experience doing it for real, you know, for, for a real apothecary, a real clinical apothecary where this, this medicine has to work, right? And it has to be able to um, um, go out to people, whether in a store or in an apothecary itself as part of a clinic. And so this is a chance for you to do that. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into those of you who remember uh, when we would do our clinics here, uh, we used to do once monthly clinics, actually for, for a period of time, I think we even tried doing them twice a month. And the apothecary, there would, we would rotate students through the clinic and the apothecary more or less uh, as much as we could. But in the apothecary, all it really was was mixing up formulas, right? Which is really almost more of a clinical task. I mean, it's some apothecary's task, but the real apothecary's task behind that, behind the scenes is making the medicine in the first place, right? That's really it. And then figuring out all of the infrastructure and the, and the logistics of being able to support and deal with uh, you know, a clinic or a brick and mortar store. Uh, which I want to have in the clinic as well. Nothing, nothing big, but just something where people coming into the clinic can buy, you know, if they want to just come in and pick up, you know, a couple of formulas that they know are, are there and are in stock, they can just do that. They don't have to come and sit in the clinic or they want to buy a book or, they, or, or you know, check out our you know, small library of books and, and buy a book or whatever, those kinds of things. So have that kind of an environment right there, which this clinic will really give us a chance to be able to do that. So you'll, as a clinician, as a clinical apothecary, you'll get, you might have a little bit different set of hours, you know, because your hours are going to be more around making medicine and then helping out a little bit in the, in the apothecary of the clinic uh, and then uh, learning some new uh, techniques that you may not have learned in any of the classes we've done because that's constantly expanding and I'm, I'm expanding everything I'm doing uh, to include some of the, the TCM multifractional techniques that I find are just incredible. They're so good. And to be able to, to include that and, and working with you know, any of our, our equipment that has to do with our apothecary as well. Um, and then of course, working in the business itself and the store. So there's two places where I think that an apothecarist or, or, you know, or there's a, two places where you can really work as a clinician. Well, really three, but let's say, say two, one obviously is in the clinic, right? Where people are coming in to see you um, a second that's kind of part of it is in a school. If you're teaching, people are always asking you questions and you can kind of be a clinician in that role. But the third and one that's oftentimes really overlooked is if you're running a store. And a lot of people that come into the apothecary programs, they want, they're on their way to starting a store. They want to do that, but they, they need to get a start on that. And so that's what our program is really a lot of times ends up being kind of um, geared toward, depending on whatever uh, you know, the, the student body wants in any given course, in any given uh, cycle of the course. This gives you a chance to do that as well and to really and to really kind of be, uh, see that in practice in a clinical environment so that when you open up a, a store and you've got everybody in your neighborhood and people from other parts of the city or the town or wherever you are coming in to get your herbs that they can't find anywhere else, they're going to be asking you questions. You know, they're going to be asking you clinical questions and depending on what state you live in, of course, there's some danger to how you answer those questions, uh, but there is an opportunity there, most of all, not only to educate, but to help people on a clinical level. So this kind of gives you all of that in one package, really, in my opinion. And, that, and that's really the, the thought behind where this apothecary program would, would be uh, running. There would be less slots for this, and they would be probably less frequent that will have people coming in for that but it's something that we very much would love to have and, and it would be a big help to the clinic and the apothecary as well. Anything you want to say on that, Sutra? Sure. Yeah, so um, I am seeing that we have some people in here who have gone with us on various different clinical trips over the years and been subjected to my wrath in the apothecary on how we run things in an off-grid environment, which I think is always really helpful if you can do it in Chinle, Arizona, or if you can do it in Potomac, Mexico, or any of the places that we have been, you can absolutely do it really well, really efficiently in a clinical environment. But um, that fast pace of the apothecarist in the clinical setting is a little bit different in this. It's more focused towards the medicine making. And when we do our clinical weeks, it's more focus towards putting together the formulas in rapid fire to send out to clients. You'll be doing that. It'll just be at a different pace. I just wanted to stress that um, because I do know we've, we've got several people in here 
who've gone through those clinical weeks and are probably wondering what the difference would be. Right, the actual speed would change significantly. This is a clinic, you know, where it's not, we're not, we're not gonna have a hundred people in line waiting outside, you know, and, and, and running from six in the morning until six at night, as we have on some, some of those. The thing I wanted to say about that, that actually I would probably should back up one slide to the clinical, I, you know, I won't, but this includes the clinical program and the apothecary program, but mostly the clinical program is one of the things that's required uh, that will be part of the requirements of doing the clinical program is if you want to complete our clinical program is that you do a certain number of our outreach clinics. And these aren't going to be clinical weeks necessarily because there are probably a dozen or more um, a low or, you know, um, at need and at, at uh, um, underserved, medically underserved communities within a hundred mile radius of where we are or less. So what that will involve is a one or two day clinic that we run out and do and set up. And we'll have all the stuff for that set up. I'm working on that right now, actually. Uh, a whole off-grid um, setup of an herbal, herbal medics clinic, the way that I like, I want to do it. And so you'll get to, to do experience that and, and experience what it is that I think it should be, you know, and you may, may, or, may or may not like parts of that, but at least give you a chance to actually experience what that is because nobody else is doing it, right? And so that's what we'll be doing. And, and you'll be able to, to get, you'll have to get part of that experience if you want to complete um, our clinical programs, uh, certifications themselves. You don't have to if you don't, if you're not in for that, but, but um, that's kind of a part of the plan as well. So at least on a monthly basis that we're doing outreach. Okay, I've been talking a lot. Um, I know there's been questions that have been coming up. I, I, I haven't been able to see all of them. They're moving by pretty quickly and stay and stuff. So if there's anything you have questions on now, um, want to type in or, or turn your mic, we can certainly talk about anything that you want to talk about there. Yes, thank you. That's I think that the outreach program is going to really be a big piece of why people are going to want to get some of this experience too. Hopefully. Just while you're talking or, or thinking of typing, if you have anything to type in, one of the one of the things that was kind of a big deal uh, to both Suchel and I on the move to Taos was that we felt like we needed a location where we can ask students to come out to where it's kind of a destination location. And not to take anything away from this gorgeous piece of land here. I love this piece of land, Sigil loves this piece of land uh, here in the hill country. And I love the hill country uh, you know, itself in Texas, but it's not a destination location, right? People don't generally come out to this area, this part of the country, you know, just to come out to here. Uh, Taos on the other hand is, uh, between the ski areas and on the mountains and uh, the towns and all the things there are to do here. And even, you know, I have to say uh, recreational cannabis, you know, that we were, I'm from Colorado originally and Suchan and I lived there together for uh, however many years it was before we left and came back down here to Texas uh, and 15 or so. And we saw the change that happened when, uh, when, um, Colorado uh, legalized cannabis recreationally, and the little town that we uh, spent our first years in, Manitou Springs, it was just an idyllic little town, like almost seemed like it was in the Swiss Alps, and uh, it was beautiful and quiet, artsy town, pretty quiet, except in the summers, you know, got pretty busy. It was just now, it's like, it's like Disneyland <laughs> with the dispensaries, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's just not even the same place. And, you know, what it for teach their own, but that's, I just, I really don't like being in an area that has that kind of that much um, you know, population milling around and milling through it. And I don't think that's going to happen here. I, you know, that isn't at all what's happening now, but, uh, but it does make this area more of a destination location. And we've seen, we're seeing some really big money being spent, uh, like Taos Air, for instance, 
uh, is, you know, is a huge amount of money being put in by the person, one of the people who is the investor in, the, in one of the big ski areas. So now you can fly directly to Taos from Austin, from Dallas, from San Diego, and from LA directly back and forth on, on a little, you know, they have a little, uh, about a fleet of jets. So very much a destination location. Okay, I'll shut up here. Go ahead, Sintra. Okay, um, on the CEUs. So right now we're licensed with the state of Texas. We can offer CEU credits towards body workers, massage therapists, people who work um, in that field. And we've had people from other states. This comes up frequently when I speak with students we have students from other states who are able to apply those CEU credits. Uh, and of course, it's on a state by state basis. We can't guarantee that other states will accept that, but that is something that we will have. And we're also going to expand to the state of New Mexico. Um, and we are looking, always looking, and this is something, I don't know that we're gonna talk about it right now, but we are looking this fall at hopefully expanding in other ways to reach other demographics of people who would like to come through and do programs. Um, so our, our intention is always to be able to reach people with the courses that we teach uh, and whether it's CEUs or working with uh, either scholarship programs for communities in need or with other programs that assist um, certain demographics. We are always looking to do that because I feel really strongly and obviously Sam does as well, that this is information we really um, this is really important to get out to all the communities and especially the ones that need it the most. So yeah, Sam, did you have any other slides after this one? Because if you didn't, I had somebody ask me a question about the map course. I do not have any other slides. Do you have okay. something you want to share? I do. So somebody was asking me just a few minutes ago <clears throat> about the map course and um, what's going on with that. And I uh, wanted to let people know that it is, if you're in the MAP course and you want to join us in the second session, which is coming up on the 30th, June 30th is the next live session that's coming up. We really encourage you to do that. We are going to be um, giving away a preparedness first aid kit, a really nice one uh, to students that are in that class and attending during that time. So if you're in the course, make sure that you attend the class so that you can have that as a kind of a bonus. I wanted to also say that it kind of fits in with what you were saying before, uh, just now, Suchel, with the fact, I wanna put this out there, that we are working on being able to offer the uh, GI Bill uh, payment towards our programs, but not, and, and, and there's a caveat to that, that it'll be a special program by itself. That'll be a sort of mix of a number of the courses out of several of our programs. So for, for some folks, uh, it probably doesn't apply to a lot of you who've already been through a lot of our courses. You've probably had a lot of them, but I want to put together something. We're working with another organization to be able to offer that. Um, not ourselves, it's just, it's just too many hoops to jump through that we just do not have the bandwidth to do, but through another organization that we're able to have a specific course that's about a 350 to maybe a 400 hour course, uh, something that would take somewhere between one and two semesters to finish uh, that can be a GI Bill uh, a course that's, again, along the same theme of herbal medics with some austere medicine, a little bit, a little bit of uh, medicine making, a little bit of apothecarist, uh, a little bit of uh, clinical medicine thrown in there as well. Uh, cool question for Rick. Uh, that I don't know. I'm not sure what this organization has done, but I can find that out. Good questions. Any other questions from anybody? I've been talking quite a bit here. I appreciate everybody being here and I appreciate your support. As always, we love our students. <laughs> this is why we do this. Um, so we're glad that you enjoy this and that you're getting something out of it, out of the programs that we're doing. And uh, I feel like I've been out of touch for the last couple of years. And I, and, well, I have been, I don't feel like I have been 
because I've had to focus. I loaded up with about 21 credit hours per trimester and got through that four hour or that four year program in about two and a half years is what I, why, why I was doing it because I wanted to get it done and get out of here and get be able to move to the next chapter and integrate what I'm learning here, which has kind of been a, about almost over a 30 year dream to be able to come back to TCM, uh, which I wanted to do before I went back in the military to become a special forces medic. I really wanted to go to, uh, to, to study TCM, a tradition of Chinese medicine at that time. Now I have, and I'm ready to take that and I'm ready to really learn, you know, you, of course you learn something in school, but you, as we all know, you know, with these things, and hopefully our school is based on this fact is that you learn by doing and you learn by by getting that hands on experience. And that's what we're trying to, you know, in our own pedagogy as we roll out these courses and the curriculum for these that we try to teach you in a manner that really gives you that hands on experience when you're when you're with us. And, uh, and so the hybrid setup is, is pretty ideal for that, you know, in a lot of ways, but I know a lot of people are sick of learning online too, uh, but it's, this allows us, gives us again, more, more breadth, more ability and more bandwidth to be able to give you more when you do come out and get hands-on and really get that focus. Yes, thank you, Scott. Yeah, so we're vet, absolutely uh, vet run and, and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, veterans that are part of our staff, absolutely. So yeah, we have uh, Kyla is, uh, she started her uh, MD and started, it works as a doctor in the army for whatever, 12 years or something like that before she got out. Um, Steve, of course, everybody knows, uh, myself, Rick, uh, who else do we have? I think uh, I think for our faculty, I think those are our, our veterans. Oh, Thomas, yeah, one of our, Thomas is retired, yeah, 82nd Airborne. Yep, so yes, thanks, Rick. And I feel like we have a good diversity in our in our faculty as well, between male, female. We're you know we're, we used to be it used to be a fairly, Katia. <laughs> it tells the story of how when she first checked our school out, and so I met her. I was teaching at a conference, and she came up and introduced herself. Excuse me. And then she checked out our website, and this was like 15, 14 years ago, something like that. And she told me she, the first thing she thought was there's entirely too many men in that faculty and not enough women. So. You know, she uh, she came out and, and uh, spearheaded the entire family program. So Katia's coming up uh, to visit with us. She's from New Mexico originally as well. She'll be visiting with us in a couple of months, and she's helping me put together that clinical internship program. And she may be the first person to go through it herself. Uh, and it's great because as she can kind of be a prototype student going through it, and we can really iron out any of the you know any of the kinks that are in there, uh, as well as her hopefully being able to see some really amazing places where she can fit in her stuff. So her emergency birth or doula certification program, all the things that Katia brings to the table. And that is a massive amount of material. Katia is an amazing instructor and has an amazing curriculum. So I would really love to see that uh, branch out a little bit for us up there too. Yeah, I'll jump in here, Sam. So yeah, I think one of the things that gives me such uh, pride about our instructors is the incredible background that they have in the areas that they teach and they're they just bring such a, a rich a rich background in that's unlike anything that um, we could have hoped for and most of our instructors um, with the exception of Kyla and Steve every one of our instructors is a student or a former student who has you know come into the fold and we've collected them into our into our cult <laughs> um, so not a cult I promise. So I wanted to answer Susan's question that's up here. Um, is there a possibility of putting together the one, two, and three day intensives together consecutively? Travel has gotten very expensive. Yes, you're absolutely right. And yes, we will have eventual plans to do that. Right now, we're kind of um, talking about, you know, we have to get things up to speed, but we're talking about pairing things like emergency birth, which is a, um, a required course in the austere program having it somewhere before or after the home course, probably before, and uh, things like that. So that when students come out, they can get multiple courses done at the same time. It's the way we used to run the spring at the school. Here in San Antonio, we would do uh, engineering, uh, off-grid engineering, uh, bookended on either side of the core basic, the scout um, course that followed that, and other things that were going on. So you could literally go through 
a month or so or more of classes in one go. So we are working in that direction, Susan. And we hope to, you know, we're going to start slow and work our way up. Uh, the first one that we may have, and, you know, it's still a little ways off, but we may have the five-day off-grid contingency blacksmithing course that I personally am really rabid about. I think that that is an amazing topic, and that's one that has applications that are actually surprisingly relevant, even in our very modern-day society, very relevant to be able to do those skills off-grid. Um, and thinking about the idea of hopefully we'll, we'll see how it goes, but doing some of our off-grid grid engineering, uh, like the um, off-grid emergency communications before and the water purification class after, those are all two, I think, two to three day courses. And of course, with the medicine making intensives, those are things that um, we will put throughout as Sam talked about with clinical internships. Or we may have Renee come up and assist us. She's a machine and incredibly skilled when it comes to making medicine and her techniques are flawless. And so Sam taught her very well. And so there will be a possibility once we're all settled in and everything is set up for students and ready for you, that we can do that. I have a question. Hi, you guys. Uh, good to see you. Um, so you talked a bit about um, the integration of uh, TCM uh, acupuncture into uh, the clinical herbalism classes. Is that strictly for your clinic and your and the intensives, or are you imagining sort of retooling um, some of the clinical herbalist modules to include that um, modality? Yes, great question. Thank you. That's an awesome question. And yes, what I see happening for sure is that there is going to be. <laughs> There always is, and I know people get sick of me, but but I, I feel like it's always necessary to constantly revamp and like I'm revamping the whole HMP this summer and the and the intro for beginners. Um, that won't be a part of this, of course. That's this is more advanced. I feel like um, absolutely. I think the first place where we're going to see that is in medicine making more than anything, and then also in the clinical program itself. Right now, for instance, uh, we have we have some. Uh, TCM herbs that are used and pulled into our Materia Medica a lot, but from a Western perspective. And so my goal was to be able to roll that back around and, and work back on bigger definitions. Um, in a lot of ways, this is uh, maybe looking back towards Peter Holmes book uh, books, you know, the energetics of Western herbs, which is where my, my first started, honestly, about 35 years ago with his books. And uh, at the time and for years, is basically I, I figured I had about access to about 50% of that information. I didn't understand the other 50%, but I thought it was pretty cool. And now I feel like we can, we can take that energetic medicine at that level and be able to integrate uh, with our Western approach as well. And especially where it comes into play, I think more than anything is in our, um, is in our um, issues around things that the Western medicine establishment categorizes in sort of the endocrine uh, uh, category. So when we're talking about endocrinology from a Western standpoint and all the things that come around that, whether it's, you know, thyroid or, or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, reproductive uh, changes in, in age and aging in general, um, the, this is places where I feel like um, TCM shines, not just TCM, but, but, in, but energetic medicine from that perspective, whether it's Ayurvedic, whether it's TCM, whether it's some other form of, of, um, of, of medicine coming from that part of the globe historically, I think uh, we find a huge, um, I mean, some of the places I've been seeing in clinic, some of these, when I first started there, I was just blown away by how, you know, some of the issues that I have been struggling with from a Western perspective are almost like low hanging fruit for some of these really, you know, experienced TCM practitioners. And I was just I'm mouth open, like, what? Seriously? Oh, my gosh, this is a whole new world. So uh, taking that, but not just taking it from a perspective of TCM and saying, oh, well, this is what we would do in TCM. But rather taking it and saying, OK, these are the herbs. And here's the overlap for an ex good example of this that's really quickly describable and accessible, I think, is our neuroregen and mitochondrial support herbs, which tend to be also in the same category or the same, they seem tend to be the same herbs that we pull over from TCM. And what categories are those in, right? And what are they doing, right? So maybe, you know, so several of them might be 
herbs that and and one level you know they nourish yen kidney yen or something and on another level we find that they do something else and so finding all of those chronic crossover points and being able to say wow this is a mitochondria this actually produces this this uh, uh stimulates mitochondrial production in certain types of tissue in the body or this stimulates uh, um, myelin sheath uh, uh, growth in damaged nerve sheath, and we're using it, have been using it, you know, intranasally for people who have uh, issues with uh, everything from brain fog, from Lyme's disease, all the way to, uh, you know, uh, uh, MS or, or you know, um, some sort of, uh, of other bad inflammatory issue that we want to get across the blood brain barrier, you know, quickly. Why is that? And how does that relate on this energetic level and, and what patterns can we set up from that that are going to allow us to look at western herbs that same way to some extent but you know not overdoing it and saying well this is you know this is only kidney you know yen as i mentioned you know so we're just that's the only thing we can do with this it's much more of an open i think uh way to be able to mix and match all of these different kind of modalities uh, because the journey is never done, right? I mean, we're never going to have those answers completely or anything close to it. So, you know, just putting more pieces of the puzzle out for everybody to, to take advantage of and walk away with. And so, yeah, I definitely see that being as part of the new curriculum coming out that'll be, um, you know, a, the people will be able to come back in and, and access to, you know, later. I want that to be the case. Scott's asking, what's the best time to call your school for information? So Scott, our hours are typically um, nine to four central time, Monday through Thursday. And we are, this week is gonna be a little bit, a little bit challenging because we're actually going up to Taos to check up some things. But if you give a call um, like tomorrow morning, if you have specific questions, I'm happy to chat with you. Um, would love to speak with you. Anyone else have any questions before we wrap up for the evening? Yes. Great, Sharon, glad to hear it. And for anybody who is interested in that, I'm really I'm excited to, to be able to hopefully uh, bring something mm -hmm. back that's new into the school as well. Yeah, I'm especially excited about what we're gonna be doing in the um, the austere medicine. I think that it is just blossoming right now. And my, what I envision happening over the next 10 years, I think is going to be really, really interesting. The places that we can take it and the things that we can do in underserved areas, I think it's going to be very powerful in empowering people to take care of their own. So that's going to be kind of my mission focus going forward. And, um, love having students. I see Cindy Mirasu, who was one of the original apothecaries way back in the day. She's here tonight, um, just trying to talk her into moving to Taos. I see Bryony. So she's been on quite a few of our clinical trips and Trevor and so many more of you that have been a part of the school almost from the beginning. And so we appreciate you all so much. This is really, as Sam said it well, this is why we do what we do. And we have recorded this. So if you joined us late or if you didn't catch all of it or if you've got questions or any of that, um, Amy's recording this and she's gonna put it in the online classroom. And again, for those of you who are curious about the math course, there's a free recording that we're gonna have in there. We'll get you that link and uh, all the information about the home course, which is seriously gonna be the first of its kind I don't know, and I look at a lot of different osteo medicine trainings. I don't know of anything that comes remotely close to what we ambitiously are planning for that one. Oh, that's one question Brian asked. Uh, Sujil, do you want to answer that? Or? I sure can. Yeah. So this actually is on, on that homepage. We have an FAQ and that's listed there. So families can come if yes, the short answer is yes. But during the actual training during the day, you can shuttle your family off to Taos or they can go skiing or they can go check out the art galleries or go to the hot springs without you. Um, so there's 
tons of things for them to do, but we ask that during the class hours that it's just the students who are enrolled in the program so that we can make sure to give you 100% of our attention and that there's no distractions or anything else. But yeah, they can come along with. Trevor's asking if we're going to offer the core basic. That might be a little bit down the road. Um, and that will depend on Rick and you know where we go with those programs, <clears throat> specifically Scout. Um, I don't know, Rick, if you feel like speaking to that tonight or not. Or let me Sam. before Rick does, let me answer real quickly. Um, okay. what the, the map course, the whole point of the map course for me, uh, when we started talking about it, was to be able to take the portions of the core basic and the portions of the scout, and then the portions of a whole new, um, a whole new subject, really, which is the medical advanced party, and blend those into one place. So that's really what has happened. Um, and it's not that the core base, the core base is a wonderful, it's an amazing experience. A lot of people remember coming through that. And, you know, by the time they get done with the adrenaline exercise on Wednesday, they're like, everybody's bonded. And it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great experience. Um, I don't know that we're going to we're going to do that just because I'm not sure that we that the that the direction of what we're really focused on is is going that direct it is really necessary to do that. Um, but I've said earlier, I'm kind of excited about getting back into some survival stuff. Uh, now that I have my black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as of last weekend, um, I can teach, I can open up a school there. And I've been thinking about doing something that is more specific to self-defense you know that's kind of where i'm too old to go out and, and compete and i've never really been into competition on that anyway i'm, I'm much more in the practical aspects of it and um so um it could be that all of that kind of blends in and we come out with sort of a new and improved core basic uh for sure that's a possibility but at this point the map course is kind of our new core basic on the medical side if that makes sense <laughs> everybody always wants to redo the adrenaline drill for some reason <laughs> Well, Sam stole a lot of what I was going to say about, about the, the core basic thing. Um, so a lot of what we used to do, we're covering in the MAP curriculum online right now and or um, we'll be doing a lot of the same kind of stuff that we did with the core basic during the first three days of the home on site. There um, are some things that we may not do um, and some additional scout skills as well that I may cover in uh, weekend intensives, uh, two days in the cooler seasons in San Antonio um, as I take breaks from chiropractic school up in Dallas to come down and make friends and teach on the campus in San Antonio. Um, but as Sam said, right now, we're kind of re-envisioning and focusing, I would say, on uh, the direction that the, that the school is going right now. And the, the core basic in its previous iteration just isn't the best fit at this time for what we're doing. Thank you, Rick. I think that's an interesting um point that Rick brought up and what you said as well. So many of our courses, they start off one place and they evolve into this thing that at the time it's like, oh, I really liked this or that. And then it turns into something, the, um, the next version of it turns into be something that's amazing. So I see that as being kind of the evolution, the map portion of the home course is gonna be a lot like that, right down to me forcing people to barter for things which I'm sure many students have fond memories of bartering with me. But um, yes, uh, and uh, to go over this question, is the San Antonio location going to continue to host intensives or is Taos the future for on-site intensives? It depends on the topic. So we like, for example, um, the home course in Taos, what we have available is, nothing like we have here. It, it's so much, there's so much more that we are able to do in that type of environment. Um, and, but on the other side of things, there are things here in the San Antonio location that are specific and necessary to be here. Um, so it's going to be kind of a mixture of different things. 
We have a lot of people who are in the San Antonio and surrounding areas who really look forward to and need to have certain classes on site. And as long as we have access to be able to do that, we will have some you know, shorter medicine making. We will have the blacksmithing. We will have um, Rick doing some of the scout related outdoor skills. <clears throat> so, and of course, botany, we have those as well. So there will continue to be that San Antonio presence, but in terms of the clinical in-depth work that will be more in the Taos area, because first of all, we will be surrounded by populations that we can directly interface with in ways that are really meaningful and we can have a direct impact very quickly. There is more than enough uh, experience that students will be able to get in that kind of environment. And we're gonna have more facilities like the, the clinic, the full-time clinic as an example, and all the other things um, that we have there are going to, to, to mean that that's where the focus of those things will be. Any other questions? Brian, for right now, we don't have any children's programs, I'm sorry. We've got our bandwidth, you know, we're focusing on the things that we really can excel at and, and there, are, there are organizations that do nothing but children's programs, uh, both here in the Austin area, uh, and I'm sure in the Taos area. Um, yes, let me answer quickly about Dr. Helm, about uh, Kyla. She, the plan, possibly, it's a possible plan, I, and I hopefully I'm not letting the cat too much out of the bag without us knowing for sure, but the, she has expressed uh, a lot of interest in being able to come down here after her youngest graduates from high school, which is another year out about, I think, at this point. Uh, and to be able to be a part of the clinic itself. Now, you know, um, I, maybe you don't, but it, when Kyle and I are in the same room, uh, things start happening with curriculum and talking, to, you know, or, or writing books. And there, I mean, it, we have so many ideas together all the time. So I guarantee you, if, you know, if we're in the same location, we're going to be, there's going to be more curriculum coming out for sure. Okay, I, I guess we'll go ahead and call it an evening unless, um, oh, Don says the posted link to the new campus doesn't seem to work. The new, oh, was that for the, the home course or for, which posted link would that be? Okay, thanks, Amy. And he's going to check on that then and repost, but. Um, and we'll send out an email with uh, a lot of different, both oh. uh, you know, the links that we talked about the most, as well as how to find things about um, all of the programs that we've discussed tonight. I should be here on, on that. Well, I should have put, give you a link with that. I believe you'll be able to see uh, my video there where I talk about this and I have all of the, and there's a bunch of pictures of the campus too that we put in, like some video that we took up there at the site. Oh, thanks, Amy. There we go. Good deal. Okay, excellent. Well, wonderful, everybody. Thank you for showing up here tonight and thank you for being a part of this. And hello to everybody that I didn't get a chance to say hello to that I know, uh, and people who have been in our classes for a long time. Appreciate you all. Thank you very much. And I guess we'll sign out at that point then, unless you have anything else to say, Suchel or Rick. No, thank you, everyone.
looking forward to starting this new chapter with you all. All right. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye, everybody.